I had a moment of weakness. I did give in, you know, and she wanted me to drink with her to, you know, sober the pain and everything. And then when her other friends had started showing up, they, and she came out of the bathroom, I had, was aware that she had did Coke and I'm not, I don't do any other drugs or anything else. And I was like, no, it's time to go and everything. And so that's where my lapse of judgment was. I didn't realize how high the situation was and everything. And so I trusted myself more than I trusted someone under the influence of Coke to drive. And so that's why I took the initiative to go and yeah, do that. And that's exactly what happened that night. All I did was come to Utah to literally just pack my son's stuff and move back home to Dallas permanently and not ever come back. We are about to watch the parole hearing of a woman who continued to get DUI after DUI after DUI until the judge said enough is enough and sentenced her to five years. Now, this is her parole hearing. It would be one year incarcerated if she were to get parole. So she has four years riding on this hearing. Do you think they'll grant? Let's jump in. All right, let me give you a brief rundown of where I think we stand. And then I want to hear from you both in response to my uh, list of things that the issues that I hope you'll identify, plus anything else that you think that the board ought to consider in determining your release. You're in, you're committed on a single driving out of the influence, a third degree felony. <clears throat> you have a maximum expiration date on that of November 28th of 2028. You were given credit for 85 days time served. You have a guideline of four months, uh, which would put you out January 28th of 2025. Um, uh, this is your first commitment to prison and you've never been paroled. Um, <clears throat> the, your, your, the issues around your current situation in the prison are kind of confusing to me in that uh, you had a disciplinary conviction and simultaneously you've had some good things as well. And uh, so I'm hoping you will um, give me some insight into how things are going, uh, how you, how, what brings you here, why you were, I mean, you know, there's a certain sense in which um, you've had four DUIs. This mm -hmm. was you, at least that I can count. Mm -hmm. This one was scary. You're stopped for registration violation, but when you get out of the car, you can't even walk mm -hmm. and you, and you blow a 0.257, very high test. Uh, so you're clearly driving a without a license and, and, and with a dui restriction and driving while you were incredibly intoxicated and uh, that concerns me i mean I, I i guess it goes without saying that it's reasonable to conclude that you've got an alcohol problem but you have an additional problem which is to say you choose to consume alcohol and then drive um one additional issue that I wanted to address, and then I want to hear from you on any or all of those items, and that is to say that in your packet, you said you want to parole to Texas. Yeah, I live in, I resigned. And which is fine. But, but, but I'm, I want to make sure that you understand that there's a process there, that we can't process you or parole you to Texas. You have to apply for a governor's compact. And when, both the Utah and the Texas governor agree, you'll be able to transfer to Texas. And I'm all in favor of that simply because I know you've got support there. Uh, have you got a place to live while you're in here, while you're remaining in Utah? Yes, I do have um, residency for friends and all that and everything that are willing to put up for, for in the process for until my compact is approved. Good. Well, you heard my wish list and now it's your turn. Go ahead. So the disciplinary, when I first got here, I got um, failure to take an order from, a, it was because um, they wanted me to remove my contacts when I first got here. So I couldn't see in any of the paperwork that I, um, so I fought that and they tried, they, I paid a fine, paid that. I haven't had no issues or no problems ever since I've yeah. been doing everything. I've been working ever since I've hit um, population. I've done a DUI program, um, life skills and everything I've done. Um, studying for extra job curricular. So I've done HVAC, electrician, you know, um, plumbing. I've gotten certifications for those. Um, I've been like outside here from at home. I've even contacted the, my family and all of us have even contacted the pro place that goes up throughout there, which is Metro Care Services for mental assessments for any kind of extra programming for any other services on top of that. 
for in case so then that way I can just uh, the footwork's already all done for me and they've already checked and seen as far as the address they're like all we're waiting for is for paperwork Good. so I have all the resources and everything set in place I have my release plan already set in place I haven't had an issue when I'm home it's when I'm here and the people who I around here so I lost my adopted parents over when I was doing RSAT before. And so the minute I had completed that program, RSAT, I flew home to Texas and I had resigned there. Well, I came up, the only reason why I had came into Utah in November was my son had called me and told me he was wanting to move home permanently, which is in Dallas, Texas with me. So I came in November 26th and we packed up all his stuff. And, um, sorry, uh, packed up all his stuff and put it in a U-Haul storage right, in Clearfield. And um, and the, he wanted to spend one last Thanksgiving dinner with his dad and their side of the family before he came with me because our flight back was November 30th. And I got I hung around with the wrong friend, which I thought she had changed her life around because I told her we weren't. She was going through a domestic violence issue. I had a moment of weakness. I did give in, you know, and she wanted me to drink with her to, you know, sober the pain and everything. And then when her other friends had started showing up, they, and she came out of the bathroom. I had was aware that she had did coke and I'm not, I don't do any other drugs or anything else. And I was like, no, it's time to go and everything. And so that's where my lapse of judgment was. I didn't realize how high the situation was and everything. And so I trusted myself more than I trusted someone under the influence of coke to drive. And so that's why I took the initiative to go and yeah, do that. And that's exactly what happened that night. All I did was come to Utah to literally just pack my son's stuff and move back home to Dallas permanently and not ever come back. Yeah, that's too bad. I mean, it really is. I mean, uh, as you describe that to me, I, you know, obviously it was a, a misjudgment on your part. It was. Like a couple of misjudgments. One is, you're hanging out with somebody who induced you and i i you know realistically speaking i understand the influence friends have but in the end it's you who chooses to drink uh, no matter what mm -hmm. your associates are doing um you're in a and you've got a you've got a record um going back you know, 15 years or more. Um, and um, I guess I'm, I'm probably in a position to, uh, to think that if you can lick your alcohol problem, we will never see you again. Yes, I don't have an issue at home. I don't drink at home. I don't any, it was the... And you don't use any other controlled substances. No, I, I don't. I couldn't find any evidence no. that um you know that though there I, I noticed in your record going back 15 years there's a reference to uh mushroom use and uh hydromorphone uh but um other than that i mean it you know your 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 record screams alcoholic and uh I'm hoping that's something you can work on. You got a GED. Yes. You got a, a college degree. Mm -hmm. uh, you've ha you've held a position of considerable responsibility with Cormark. Mm -hmm. um, you got long term employment with them, eight to ten years. I and think. they're still waiting for me. Yeah. And I'm like, I've been talking to them, and like, I'm they're just waiting for me to get home. Yeah. That's and you got literally family always, support. Yes. I mean, you know, there is absolutely I've, every reason to believe. I've never had an issue at home in Texas. That's why I went back home. And yeah. it's always here. And that's why I left permanently. And then I just was coming to get my son. And that's literally all what happened. Yeah. I just happened to give in and had a moment of weakness. I've never, yeah. Well, I think you're probably in a position where... Um, all of the ingredients are in place mm -hmm. for you to be successful. And, you know, from my perspective at, at 35, you look like a young woman to me and uh, your whole life is ahead of you. And I think if you can stay away from alcohol, you're, you know, 
would you're never going to have this conversation with me or anybody else anybody again. else mm -hmm. uh and and you know i look at it and you've had you've had a little ton of problems for a ton of years but you've also had way long stretches of time years where you don't run into trouble and it's always when i'm home yeah when i'm back in dallas yeah it's when literally when i come here on a vacation or for anything or during the time period those times has happened i had came here because my son lived was with his father and he was in clearfield no and that's why every all my son he's 15. he just turned 15 february this year no. you came so close to getting out of here i did oh, <laughs> i'm like my flight was the 30th just, and it was it november just, 28th yeah it, it breaks my heart because i mean i as I as I waded through your file, and it's it's not a thin file. I mean, you get you know you you haven't had a a consistent life of crime, but you've been you know on and off involved with with the system all of your adult life, really. Mm -hmm. And um, I look at it and go, wow, you know, there's on the one hand, I say to myself, like this is a woman who can. Who, who, if she can solve a single problem, you're it was to do my step simultaneous. Step. Like, oh, you've been working on it for 15 years. Why in the world do I think you're going to be able to? to I'm like, my son's 50. <laughs> he was here. Yeah. I'm like, that was it. the only thing, reason why I had came back. Well, any of the times was my son was here. Yeah. And now that he was just like, I'm ready to come home. And so I was like, hey, you're moving home permanently. So I came to come get him. And yeah. Well, and, and I, you know, I you persuaded me that that's that that's a legitimate thing. Like my family's already purchased the I don't. It's called a a one way open ticket or whatever. I just had they just have to call the airport and give them a date because mm. so the tickets already flight. It's a one way just to go home for me and my son. They're like we're just waiting for to find out what happens to you because yeah. my son's still waiting out here because he's waiting to go home with me too he's like i'm not gonna leave you mom you came here to get me and he's like i know you're stuck but he's like i'm not leaving home until you go so your son is still here living with your ex mm -hmm. well he's off and on because he doesn't have the greatest relationship with his father so he's been staying with um a close friend the one that like if i was to leave and wait until my interstate combat he's with them or he like does the weekends at his dad because yeah. it's summer break but other than that yeah just waiting. Well, you're really in a position where where um, everything is in place for you to be a success. And uh, I guess we're going to find out whether you're capable of doing that. The guidelines are just guidelines, but they are they are a real problem. I mean, you've you've got a significant history and and have generated a substantial guideline and and we're all going to have to live with that. But at the same time, I'm hoping that um, that this is the end of these kind of problems for you. Yes, it is. I just the only thing I ask is let me show. Let me show. I mean, I understand the guideline is so long, but I'm like, I have my life continuance just waiting. Like I'm like, the longer I sit in here, the more it's prolonging me from being succeeding, you know, yeah. as far as my work, as far as running the ranch, as far as my son, you know, everything's just put on hold. The longer I sit here, it's not, I mean, I get most of the times people are on a DUI here, whatever they're contingent to do a program. Let me be released to do a program and show you while I can work at the same time and do it all. I've never had an issue with any other probations well, you've doing any of that. I've you... completed successfully and terminated early everything. Yeah. You've completed programs in the past. I mean, you know, I, I look at, do it. at what happened here and and uh, and go, can you know, because you've been supervised on occasion and and you've managed to to do pretty well. I'm just going through your like you dig back down to what your history is here. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, you've did you, RSAT, DUI court. Yeah, you did the I DUI did. court. Um you've You've had a bunch of real positive things going on. Um, I just, just needed to remove myself from the situation and the surrounding that put me yeah. in a lot of them. And I did. 
Yeah, doggone it. You're really in a position where, where, um, I mean, you know, you got, you had, um, you were at the TRC in 2011 with a successful completion. You did the drug, uh, the drug court probation in 2022, successful completion. So you, you know, you know, I mean, it's it's one of those things that's uh, it's frustrating for me to read your file. It must be really mm -hmm. frustrating. And like, you. and like, I and, even um. So there's Metro Care Services, which is parole goes throughout in Dallas. They've even they're waiting for my schedule for an intake and enrollment, depending on the date at the Moreland address in the Lancaster. And that's literally just five miles from the, my residency out there. Into, like I've already been, I've talked to the other services and places and everything. So that way, like all the footwork's already all done. Yeah. I'm like, I just, they're all just waiting for the paperwork and just sure. the date. All right. Well, you've answered all my questions and, and, and I'll be honest with you. Um, uh, you have, you have gone some distance towards convincing me that that you're the real deal that you are you are um the kind of person that i will never see again i don't I like, position, like i don't so. mind you know nothing against utah but i yeah. really well, don't well, mind i had already you know, made that you know I, I i will tell you honestly that um while i have no control over mm -hmm. uh, compact transfers texas I, I i'm absolutely certain having reviewed your file and having heard you here this afternoon that you that getting back to texas is is the key yeah that's what I, my intention full intention is is just to go home that's like like i said my family has the flight everything like i just want to go home good well sounds like a plan anything else you think the board ought to consider no just thank you for your time all right good luck to you for that we'll thank conclude you. the hearing they granted her for a statutory minimum release date. So it's 128, 2025, which is about four months at the time of the hearing. And I don't know what hearing he saw. I certainly didn't see what I thought he claimed he saw, which is a good hearing. I just didn't see it. What I saw was someone who was still blaming others, who was still kind of in just didn't what <laughs> look. It, <laughs> We've seen so many hearings from different states, hundreds, thousands of hearings, and so many of these DUI hearings. And you see in like in Louisiana, mostly the, the certain questions that are often asked is, what's your plan when you get out? What are you going to do to stay sober? I didn't hear that question. I didn't hear a game plan. I didn't hear that she was going to go to AANA to uh, 30 and 30. Um, it was just simply, well, I'm going to be out of the state. And I'm, I'm not going to, uh, to do it. I'm not. I'm not going to do it. And he brings up how she completed drug court basically a, a year before getting locked up or months before getting locked up. That obviously didn't help. Now, she had all these DUIs, and I guess, you know, a judge finally said, look, enough's enough. We need to send you a message. We need to send you to prison. And they did that. And she spent her time, and she'll get out, and one might argue, okay, you know, that's that's enough. She did her time. You scared her straight, hopefully. But I just didn't see anything. The, the, there is a risk that she will get back into a car well you know or are there mandates that we we didn't hear you're going to need to have an interlock device you're going to need to have we, i just didn't hear any of that what, what, that we're accustomed to hearing in different states different parole hearings and you know it could be he's just happy that she's leaving utah They're like well we don't care she's going to some other state where we'll be safe but i'm you know, again, from seeing so many different parole hearings where people have taken a life, vehicular homicide parole hearings, and then you find out that they had prior convictions and you say, how is it possible? Well, this is how it's possible. I mean, her story was literally, well, I just came to pick up my son and I was going to leave in two days. And then I had a friend come over and the friend started doing drugs. And I said, well, I'm safe to drive. I'm, I'm safer than they are. So I'm going to drive. It's like, how can you say that at your parole hearing? It's called Uber. Worst case scenario, it's called Uber. It's called call a taxi. You are making a decision with everything on the line. You are disappointing your son yet again. 
you are putting everyone at risks and and you show up all this time later and just say well i thought i was the safest one to try and she was blaming it on her on her friend it's frustrating you're not a baby anymore you're not a child you're an adult you're a mother you find out she has a college degree she has a job for a long time she's this she's that but it's like where's the maturity let's see the uh three point three point eight back was that what it was no 2.57 depending on her weight it would have been nine drinks or guess about six drinks over i guess a few hours i guess it depends on the hours then uh she does have a long arrest record we see it here and you know th what's scary about this chart is you see 9 18 2017 10 12 2017 7 8 18 8 29 18 four in a row back to back to back and somehow not given any prison time but we'll see we'll see what happens right i don't uh we just have to hope for the best i i really don't know what parole hearing he was referring to i didn't see anything special but um help the channel grow subscribe we're going for a hundred thousand subscribers and with that i'll let you go